Achieving low energy costs for Jamaica is very much high on the agenda for the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining. And so throughout the month of January 2015, it embarked on several initiatives, including collaborations with foreign partners. In January 2015, government led the charge to achieve energy security and low energy costs with projects to build out the national infrastructure and strengthen human capacity. An announcement was made on January 14 for the rollout of the 78 megawatt renewable energy project in February. The $196 billion project, which is expected to be completed by March 2016, will see one solar and two wind energy plants being constructed in Clarendon, St. Elizabeth and Manchester. Contracts are now in place. Our purchase agreements have been signed and licenses have been issued. On January 19, Wigton signed a 40 million US dollar contract with Spanish firm Gamesa to begin work in April on the 24 megawatt Wigton 3 plant. Gamesa will install 12 new wind turbines, bringing Wigton's total capacity to 62.7 megawatts and reducing Jamaica's annual oil consumption by more than 37,000 barrels. 125 jobs will be created. Meanwhile, announcement came on January 26 of a 90 million US dollar investment to develop the 34 megawatt wind plant by Blue Mountain Renewables LLC in Monroe, St. Elizabeth. The funds are being provided by the United States Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, and the US State Department. That project is expected to get underway in June. Reducing Jamaica's dependence on fossil fuel by the increased use of renewable energy sources gained traction with other developments in January. Jamaica is even more resolute and committed to continue on this path of energy conservation efficiency, energy diversification, to embrace the newer, cleaner fuels, and of course, fully take on board renewables. A memorandum of understanding was signed on January 21 to both promote clean energy and strengthen government's energy conservation and efficiency program. The agreement is with the United States government. Clean energy formalizes several of the activities our two governments are undertaking to break Jamaica's dependence on fossil fuels by furthering the renewable energy sector. Under the program, the U.S. government will provide technical assistance, training and support to build Jamaica's human resource capacity. The government of Jamaica, meanwhile, will provide the necessary access to data, personnel and information to facilitate the project. The agreements must be judged on their, not only on their material value alone, but their qualitative value and the tremendous contribution that they can make to the development of our human resources and the impact that they can have on our environment and equally valuable resource. Both governments will also work at establishing the framework for clean energy development, integrating renewables into the national grid, and increasing private sector investment in clean energy. Government also tackled high prices at the pump in light of the reduction in global oil prices. Several calls were made for retailers to lower their prices and the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ, hosted a forum on January 22 to explain its pricing mechanism. What we hope to achieve is to have a dialogue and to close that gap which exists because we know a gap exists in terms of that understanding and to bring you in a sense up to date as to how Petrojam works, how it decides on the, the pricing of its various products and how that impacts you. One component of the governments of Jamaica and the United States clean energy program is the expansion of broadband network in rural communities. Solar energy systems are to be constructed to facilitate the rollout using TV white spaces. Universal Access Fund is collaborating with US-based entities Microsoft Limited and NetHope Incorporated to use solar technologies to power the network. And what it will do is to ensure that those communities that are way beyond the reach of the commercial operators, we are now going to be able to capture them, we are going to be able to provide them with broadband services. A pilot project to explore the feasibility of the initiative is underway and will run for six months. Meanwhile, government's distribution of tablets under its tablets in schools pilot project came to an end in January. Last in the batch were students from Paritown Primary and Infant School in St. Anne and Rear Brino Primary School in Trelawney. They were presented with the devices on January 28 and 29. 
The handout brought the curtains down on the $1.2 billion project, which saw 25,000 tablet computers being distributed to teachers and students in 38 educational institutions across the island. And with internet usage and access on the increase, government has set out to protect the country's information and communications technology sector. On January 28, it launched the National Cybersecurity Strategy. I think it's important because it provides a strategic framework within which we operate. We were doing a number of activities in the cybersecurity space. This underpins all the activities, places them in a context, and provides a kind of framework for how we will attack cybersecurity as a nation. The four components under the strategy are technical measures, human resource and capacity building, legal and regulatory, and public education and awareness. Together they will address standards for the protection of critical infrastructure and sensitive data, develop and sustain a pool of information security professionals, establish policies that create offenses and provide recourse, promote public awareness and develop a culture of cybersecurity. We see this as so critical to the future of our country, to the existence of our web presence. The Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, a recap of ongoing works during the month of January to achieve the targeted 20% energy generation capacity from renewables, drive energy investments, increase internet access and provide the framework to protect the information and communications technology space.